We are in IEC building, and I'm the executive director of IEC for a long time. <laughs> it's a good coincidence, and thanks to God. Distinguished members of executive board of Vital Voices, Madame Diane von Fertenberg, I'm so happy to meet you today. Distinguished members of Vital Voices, fellow recipients of the distinction of Voice of Solidarity, honorable guests. Ladies and gentlemen, it is impossible for me to describe my emotion at being here among you this evening to receive this reconnection from Vital Voices and organization founded and conducted by exceptional women who are convinced that the situation of men, many women and girls throughout the world is not a fatality, but the consequence of a disorder created by patriarchal societies, unfair and aggressive towards the most respectable part of humanity, women. Ladies and gentlemen, the name Viral Voice includes the word viral. I like this word. Since our struggle is not only about defending the rights of women and girls, but also, and in particular, about protecting their sacred life. Many men and also many women think that rights of women and girls are gold nuggets in the men's pocket and that they are free to distribute them depending on the frequency of the women's begging. Our common struggle to restore the balanced development of humankind through the restitution of the rights and all the rights of women and girls is not a gift, but the duty of all and everyone. Because the violence against women in general and female genital mutilation in particular, they are an insult to women and girls. This is why I have accepted with humility and great proud the prestigious distinction awarded to me and to my friend by Vadal Voice after considering my modest career. Members and leaders of Vital Voice, I say thank you to you. Thank you on behalf of my family, my country, the Republic of Guinea. On behalf of millions of African women and girls, and particularly, thank you on behalf of the twins, Hassanatu and Husenatu whom I saw dying in the prime of their lives as a result of female genital mutilation. Truly, I'm here and around the world on a mission on their behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests, I would like to stress that I'm not an activist. I'm not an iconoclast or an agitator. I'm a revolted, revolted against an established and accepted disorder on the ruin of the discrimination against women and girls. Revolted against wanton and very often unpunished physical and psychological violence against women and girls. Revolted, in particular, 
against female genital mutilation and child marriage, which are unacceptable practices, going back to time immemorial and continued in the name of so-called social traditional values. Thus, since 35 years, I'm revolted. Thanks to the Inter-African Committee, IEC, I declare always it loudly and clearly in villages, schools and universities, markets, factories, hospitals, in mosques, church and parishes, on appropriated platform at national, sub-regional, continental, and international levels, and also on social network. I'm working and fighting everywhere. When I embarked on the struggle to eliminate female genital mutilation and other harmful traditional practices, I thought I was alone in trying to break the taboos. Ladies and gentlemen, to my big surprise, four generations of my family stood up by my side. My mother, Saran Kondi, who supported me unconditionally and who participated in all major activities of my organization. She was here with us in the United States of America, in Washington, D.C., in July 2017, to take part in the march against female genital mutilation. Yes, she was here. My mother passed away one year later, on July 11, 2018, at the age of 90. My wife, my children, and grandchildren made the struggle against harmful traditional practices in general and female genital mutilation in particular a family business, a family challenge, and a heritage they are proud to carry. Thank you for coming. My son and my daughter and my granddaughter are here. Thank you. A month ago, a school teacher asked each of the young pupils, why are you special? My five-year-old granddaughter, Amina, answered, showing a drawing. I'm special because I'm not a victim of FGM. The fourth generation finally free from FGM, female genital mutilation. It's quite possible and it's becoming a reality. We can and we must overcome and eradicate female genital mutilation. For this, we all need to realize the following. The struggle against female genital mutilation is not African. American or European, and even less Asian. This struggle is a sacred duty of the whole of humanity. I, dedic I dedicate this distinction to the twin Asanatu and Usenatu, to my parents, especially to my mother, to my family, to the million of women in Kurusa, my city, in Guinea, in Africa, and all over the world who are the proven or potential victims of practices that are harmful to their health and that violate their fundamental rights. Last but not least, I would like to express my profound admiration for Vidal Voices, and especially to its dynamic young ladies 
Morgan, Kristen, and Leslie, who have broken down the linguistic, cultural, and racial barrier in order to create a critical mass in the exclusive service of women and girls throughout the world. Thank you, ladies. What I'm saying is coming from my heart, from the bottom of my heart. When you broke the taboo around FGM, you are not afraid to say the truth everywhere. My main objective is not to be a champion in the defense of women and girls, no. My final objective is to see the women and girls defend themselves and protect themselves against injustice, discrimination, violence, and underestimation, and to succeed in this endeavor. The struggle continues. Thank you. <laughs>